what's going on guys it's Tom New York and today we're gonna do a brand new video where I'm gonna be giving you my guide to Constantine and rise of kingdoms I have like this little sore on the side or like the underneath of my tongue and it's I'm thinking about it while I'm talking I can feel it there I don't know where it came from I just woke up and it was just there super annoying dude anyway it doesn't matter but what does matter is the fact that 75 percent of you guys are not subscribed to the channel what's going on man go ahead and click that sub button click that bell button guys what do you not want me to eat food this month i got i got mouths to feed okay i got i got people to take care of i got creatures to take care of so i need you guys go down there click that sub click that bell it really does help out the channel it's done so constantine second mightiest governor legendary we're gonna be talking about in a row last time we talked about saladin this time we're talking about constantine he's an infantry garrison support legendary commander he first comes around from ideas governor but you can also add more skills to him with the universal legendary commander sculptures or you can get him from the card king event and if they ever do release that legendary tavern event that was leaked on roni's channel i'm sure you can get him from there as well at least that's how it seems at the moment so like we do with all these tier list videos first we're going to take a look at his skills really briefly just so we get a general idea of what's constantine doing like well you know what what's he up to what's he up to when he's out on the open field it's good to know right his primary skill for five seconds will reduce the target's attack by 40 percent right single target 40 percent attack reduction and his army and all nearby allied armies will take 10 percent less damage for five seconds so super supportive super useful skill out in the open field right super useful skill his second skill gives your infantry units 40 percent more health very straightforward very simple very tanky his third skill will give your garrison and your watchtower 10 percent extra attack it also will reduce the amount of uh, damage that you're taking from cavalry normal attacks by 10 percent this last part of the skill was added specifically to sort of counter attila takeda now there's better options for countering attila takeda but that's kind of why they did this overall this is a decent attack buff to your garrison because this is for all units all troop types not just infantry everybody knows watchtower is useless so that part doesn't really matter his fourth skill will give you a 15,000 healing factor once per hour after your army leaves the city. However, when you have less than 50% of units remaining, the healing effects after that, that you, that you do get are decreased by 30% and skill damage that is taken while the shield is active. It's actually reduced by 40%. So there's a little bit of a negative to being under 50. There's also a bit of a positive for being under that 50% mark. Very interesting skill here indeed. And then his expertise gives you 20% of stats to any troop type, which is crazy. You get 15% attack and 5% defense. This is actually an incredibly good expertise skill for such a tanky commander like Constantine, one who's likely going to be in a flag or on a wall. So you might be saying, Omniarch, why didn't you take him all the way to expertise then? And the reason is because these last two skills are really for uh, defending right they're very defensive and honestly most of Constantine's open field virtually all of his open field usefulness comes from these first two skills and so this is 190 sculptures right so is his expertise worth 500 universal commander sculptures I don't think so right I just don't for 190 you get a really solid Constantine and that's where I decided to leave him because honestly I he's he's not the flag defense meta anymore and I just don't think it's worth taking him all the way there okay next we're going to be talking about talent builds okay I actually have five talent builds that I'm going to give you because Constantine has a lot of different roles that he can play in this game this build is for countering Attila Takeda right so if you're in a flag you have your Constantine there this is the build you want to use for countering Attila Takeda it avoids all of the skills over here that are specific for um, skill damage right so you don't you don't need any of those talents so this basically maximizes your defense uh, capabilities for normal attack and counter attack damage this build is in your Canyon so you pair Constantine with either Joan Mulan or some other support commander like Cleopatra whoever you want to do mainly it's with Joan right mainly people do this with Joan you put uh, Constantine Joan and then you have this army in front of an ethel fled isong yay that's what this build is for right because you're going to be doing the slowdown here you're going to be doing the slowdown here and this build is specifically to capitalize on the fact that ethel fled and isong behind you are going to be dealing crazy damage to the slowed targets that are being slowed by constantine's talents over here so this is the build if you have joan and you have constantine in your canyon this is what you're going to want to use 
if you want to go in the open field with Constantine and Joan or Mulan or whoever else you bring with him as a support commander this is what I would do do here uh, you don't go all the way up to the slow here this doesn't really matter too much I put three extra points in this last uh, I think this is cage of thorns over here yeah cage of thorns I put three extra points here because I didn't know where to put them you could put them wherever you want I put them here for the extra slowdown ability because this is I believe this is AoE um, so yeah I think that's useful but you guys can put those three points wherever you want this build is specific Specifically, if your Constantine is on your is in your garrison and your city is either being surrounded or you're taking multiple rallies that's what this is for you come over here you get know thy enemy and you basically take nine percent less damage from all sources super super powerful for that scenario now this scenario is very niche you more than likely will not need this talent build right usually if you're gonna get multi rallied or multi uh, or swarmed you're either offline you can't do anything about it or you should teleport or use a bubble or something like that but if you're crazy and you want to take that then here you go that's your talent build and finally this is a talent build for putting constantine in a flag or in your city to take a single rally or maybe multiple rallies if it's a flag um that deals skill damage right so if they're doing like an edward tamiris or something like that this is going to be the one that you want to use um this again this is this is preventing skill damage right so the reason that you don't use this against attila takeda is because attila takeda doesn't deal any skill damage right so i know that that was a lot of talent builds but again most of you are going to use this for canyon and this for open fields but if you're going to be using for any of the other specific defensive scenarios go ahead and use them okay with all that out of the way let's talk about the different categories for constantine so the first category as always is the open field category now constantine actually performs really well here because he is a tanky supportive commander right he's buffing everybody around you by giving them a 10 percent uh uh, damage taken reduction super powerful right that's super powerful he's also adding that 40 percent attack debuff to a target that's actually really impressive because it's for five seconds right he's got the 40 percent health he's got the support tree the infantry tree there's a lot to love about constantine in the open field and you know like i said at five five one one he gets pretty much all that value almost all the value that you can get from a constantine right now there's some things to like about this last skill but you know at the end of the day most of the value is here so he's a very cheap investment and brings a ton of value the only thing preventing him from being an s tier in the open field is that he's not really dealing damage right he doesn't have a damage factor single target he doesn't have aoe he's really just doing normal attack and counter attack damage and he doesn't really have any attack he just has health right so his support role is super powerful and it's crucial right but there's just that one thing that's preventing him from being an S tier. So Constantine is, you may have guessed it by now, he's an A tier commander for the open field fighting. The next two categories are rallying objectives and rallying cities and Constantine does not belong here, right? What are you doing if you're using a Constantine to rally? Okay. We just talked about how he's not dealing damage. And what do you want to do when you're rallying? You want to deal damage. Okay. So don't just do yourself a favor. Don't bring Constantine. He's not going to deal damage to your target. So why, why, just why do you want, do you want a tanky rally? I mean, like, what, what do you want to drag the fight out? You, you want to, you want to fill your hospital over the course of an hour? Like, no, just don't bring him to those. Don't, don't rally anything with him. He gets a D in both of these categories. The next two categories are defending objectives and defending cities. And he does perform the same, in my opinion, in both of these things. Now he's a very tanky commander, right? He is infantry focused. He's got the garrison tree. He's got the support tree. So it's not the defense tree, but it is really nice. He does have rejuvenate there, which is great. If it's a single rally, he's reducing that rally's attack by 40% for five seconds. That's crazy. Reducing all damage he takes by 10%. He has a way to counter cavalry. And if he's in your city, he's giving 20% of stats to all troop types that's all of your siege all of your cavalry all of your infantry all of your archers they all get 15 percent attack and five percent defense that's nuts right that's super super powerful for an expertise so he's great for your city if he's expertise he's also great in a flag because again early game he was one of the counters for Attila Takeda you could still use him as such I just think there's better options now but overall like as a infantry garrison he's good right he is outclassed though okay he's outclassed he's, he's very good but he's outclassed now uh Zenobia outclasses him Theodora YSS even in some scenarios you could say Wuzetian outclasses him so for those reasons Constantine doesn't get an S but he does get an A he gets an A for defending objectives and cities I think he's still very powerful in those ways but he's just he's not the he's not the best anymore he's, he's, his crown has been stolen by a couple of other commanders the next category is Canyon performance and Constantine you may have already guessed what I'm going to say here but Constantine 
is absolutely incredible for your canyon now the reason for this is because his primary skill is reducing the damage your entire canyon takes by 10 percent for five seconds every time a skill goes off that's crazy right plus the rage engine the support tree this is basically going to go off all the time right this is almost always going to be up but if not always right there's it's just it's so powerful it's so good for your canyon and at five five one one to basically get the maximum canyon effectiveness from him crazy good we also talked about the synergy with ethelflaed and isong Ye behind a constantine and joan or constantine mulan and the the reason for that is the support in the infantry tree can apply those slowdowns with those talents uh, and that's really going to help ethelflaed and isong just chunk down that competition just aoe everything and it's it's super powerful this is hands down the best investment that i've ever made in my canyon team whether it's sunset canyon or even lost canyon you're going to notice that a lot of the top tier players use constantine you're going to see him one of the rules that i usually use when i'm trying to climb the ladder is if i see a powerful player and he has a constantine like and he's more powerful than me i probably know that i can't defeat him but if he doesn't have a constantine it's usually a, a pretty decent chance that i can which is crazy like sometimes constantine will make or break an entire canyon team and and that's my opinion that's what i've seen so with that being said constantine is an s tier commander for the canyon category finally there is barbs and forts this is the pve content and constantine doesn't really belong here right he doesn't have any march speed he doesn't deal any damage really he doesn't have any extra damage towards neutral units or barbs he doesn't give you any extra experience there's just really no reason to use constantine against uh pve content unless it's something like arms master lohar where constantine is like nearby providing above there's just there's no real reason to do barbing with constantine i don't know why you would so because of that he gets a d ranking for the pve content so with all that being said with all that being said, how does Constantine rank in an investment tier list like ours? If we stack him up against all the other legendaries in the game, is it worth investing your legendaries into Constantine? I think overall, Constantine is a B tier legendary commander. Now, I've given a lot of praise to Constantine in this video. And the reason for that is because of how much value you get at 5511. If you're gonna take an expertise, I think he's a b tier okay i think he's a b tier and the reason for that is because he's just outclassed by other garrison commanders at this point you have zenobia zenobia you have theodora you have yss you have um Wu Zetian. there's just a lot of other options where i think going all the way with constantine just doesn't seem like a great investment it wouldn't be the worst investment because you do get a lot of value here so because of that he's a b tier legendary investment but i will say little asterisk as a 5511, I think a lot of players should be considering this. I think a lot of players should because it's going to help your canon team. It's only, a, it, I say it's only, it's 190 legendary commander sculptures, which is it's, it's, it's a lot, right? It's a lot, but there's not that many legendaries that you can get this much value out of 190 legendary commander sculptures. So keep that in mind. But overall, after all is said and done, including his expertise and everything like that, he's a B tier legendary. Guys, with that being said, if you found this video useful, entertaining, or informative, make sure you drop a thumbs up on it. It really does help out the channel a ton and if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video i just realized that i wasn't using my anti-glare youtube glasses this entire time so comment down below if you noticed that my glasses were different be honest did you notice did you notice as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram twitter discord facebook wherever you want you can find me in the description below and as always there's a link in the description below to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your PC or your Mac. What? That's crazy. Yeah, the game looks so good on a big screen and it really helps in those big open field fights. Like I said, the game's beautiful. Playing it on your computer is absolutely for free. So go ahead and click that link in the description below and give it a try. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Peace.